Hello, friends. Welcome back to Love Wrestling. Spencer Love here with a personal favorite professional wrestler, one of the Canadian greats. I know you guys have seen me tweet that more than once, so it ain't just me putting you over for the show's purposes. Michael Allen, Richard Clark, the PWA heavyweight champ, joining me on the show. Man, it's good to talk to you. The first time we chatted was about a year and a half ago, and then we chatted right before the pandemic started after the Clandestine Society show. It's been a bit, man. How are you doing? How are things? Honestly, I don't even remember the second time we talked. I remember the first time <laughs> on stairs or whatever. That's oh yeah, that's right. We were sitting in your uh, that office at my the, Force Pro uh, office. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> I forgot all about that. Honestly, well, exactly because it's been a minute, man. You know, you and I chat casually about things that I'm very obviously wrong on when it comes to goaltenders and metal bands often, <laughs> but we haven't chatted about yourself, your about your professional wrestling career in a while mostly because there hasn't been a ton how have you kept busy throughout the pandemic i mean you're a fit dude i watch your gym videos that you're putting out on youtube now so you're doing I well <laughs> i want to get into another one um funny enough uh, i'll uh, i'll give you the exclusive here i i pulled a michael richard blaze here and i i tore my pec in the summer oh I had shit. surgery uh in late september so that's what i've been kind of keeping busy with i'd say i'm about maybe 90 percent I mean, certain things are still t- really tight on the shoulder, I find, but I had like a bad shoulder before, just mm-hmm. like prior injuries. But uh, that's uh, that's uh, the rehab and everything is just a whole new uh, world for things. And it's pretty humbling when you uh, you have such a severe injury like that. Like once the swelling went down and, and all my movement came back, because you'd imagine you can't move your arm or anything. Once all the movement came back, I had no strength. And this is going to sound funny, but you go from bench pressing like well over 300 pounds to not being able to do a push up. <laughs> yeah. Which, hee haw. Yeah. My character, that's a big problem, obviously. Right. But it's, it's just really fast and it, it sucked. It was the worst. Mm-hmm. I'd have to say, though, like one of the big things for me that I found tough at the start of the pandemic was okay, how do you set goals? How do you keep yourself motivated for stuff? And I know that you're a guy who's very goal oriented. It's a really weird way to put it, but did that sort of help you when you were going through rehab, sort of stay mentally in it, stay, I guess, in game shape, for lack of a better way to put it? Yeah, I guess so. It's really tough, though. Like, I had probably a a good month off of, like, no movement or anything. I started physio, I think, three and a half weeks after my surgery. Mm -hmm. And it's... Uh, it was like staggering the amount of like size I lost and the amount of strength and all the movement. So I guess that is like a bit of a goal. Like, Hey, I want to be able to do a chin up again. I want to be able to, you know, bench press a certain amount of weight again, or or do 20 push ups. Like these things, I guess it is like little steps. I didn't look so I didn't look to it as much as like goals per se as it's just like, I have to get back to normal. Yeah. What were some of your goals then throughout the pandemic? Because again, you're, you're a guy who I've always looked to as okay. Michael Allen, Richard Clark is a guy who's planning. He's a guy who's organized. He's a guy that you can sort of pull some inspiration from for lack of a better way to put it whenever you and I have talked. So what were some of your goals throughout the pandemic? How did you, uh, how did you try and meet that goal setting quota? Um, I really wanted to, uh, you know, of course, increase some lifts and increase your cardio, I was doing a lot of running in the summer. Now that the weather is starting to turn again, I used to run in the cold a lot. I guess I'm a baby now. I don't do it much anymore. <laughs> a lot more stairs and burpees at the gym, but I, I'm excited that now that the weather is really turning to start running again and start, you know, and, and this time off is really, it's going to sound funny, but like lots of little itsy nagging injuries are getting healed now. So like, I expect a lot of people will be feeling probably as good as I am aside from my, uh, my surgical repair, not feeling the best and not feeling like it was before, but like, I hurt my back at that saddle dome show, funny enough. Mm -hmm. And that just nagged me for until wrestling stopped. Mm -hmm. So that was a good, I don't know, what was that five months, I guess. And I know it was just one of those things. It just, you take a bump and it just keeps nagging at you and it just keeps flaring it up. So that's something that I'm happy that has been able to heal at least. 
Take me through the experience of the Saddle Gnome Show, because obviously injury notwithstanding, which I feel like we can probably put in the title of the podcast by this point. What was it like for you to be able to wrestle, not only in the venue, but be able to wrestle in front of, I think it was 4,000 or 4,500 fans that stuck around for the show? It, it, that was a really cool experience. Like, it was just cool spending the day in the Saddle Gnome. Like, we, uh, we hung out in... I can't remember if it was the, we were in the flames dressing room for a bit and then we got put in the visitors dressing room. But I mean, I, I played hockey and we always had like these nice stalls, like when you play junior hockey and stuff, like some of the nicer mm-hmm. arenas, you have your own stalls and stuff. And it just reminded me of that nice carpeted floors and everything. It was kind of a pain in the ass to find your way in when yeah. we got there during the day. <laughs> and we had a lot of the day to the kill, but it was really cool. Like doing the media because we all did like little promos before that they played on the jumbotron and then that ring like red hearts ring was set up in the concourse there and we were all doing meet and greets with fans or whatever it was just like the whole experience was like super cool and then just like seeing certain things like i wrote on the uh they had the starting lineup sheet from when the flames were there and they had everybody like the guy writes it on the whiteboard and i put myself O'Doyle and Parsons and just like little things like that are just like oh that's just like a little bit of a cherry on top you know what I mean yeah how familiar were you with like the history of Stampede and all of that growing up as a kid for a lot of the Albertans obviously it's pretty ingrained whether you watched or not but from someone from Saskatchewan Manitoba and everywhere but Alberta what was it like for you what was the uh what was the experience like it, it just like since I wasn't too familiar with it. Obviously you'd heard of it. You'd heard of like how legendary it was and the guys that came out of it and all the greats that, that were there and got picked up by the WWF or WCW or whoever and went on to do big things. And the talent that was there is just unbelievable. And it was sort of something that you come to appreciate or you come to understand more as you, you become a wrestler and stuff. And you get to meet some of the old school guys like John Cosman, uh, Richard Pound, uh, principal mm-hmm. pound he used to wrestle in high impact wrestling out in saskatchewan i mean wavell did a little bit at the trail end of the stampede and then you of course you have duke and duke durango and chris Steele and people like that who are like super cool cool dudes once you're in wrestling and you get to meet them so yeah it's, it's really cool to i guess represent that in a way in a very small way but it was very cool to like be able to say that you also wrestled there when the only other people that have wrestled at that venue is stampede right yeah like literal legends of the industry right yeah yeah. now i know it's not quite stampede wrestling but tell me a little bit about golden dragon wrestling if i'm getting the name correctly gold dragon i've never wrestled for gold dragon actually i didn't i thought you went there as part of your uh experience in your first foray into professional wrestling weren't you trying to uh Um, not try out or try to train there if i remember the story correctly yes okay um gold dragon was that's actually where guys like McSugar and Ace Riviera and them started. But okay, um, cool. what happened is when I was looking the train, I looked up, I was Googling uh, uh, schools like wrestling schools around the area. And the only one I found was in Moose Jaw. And that was the golden dragon one. Mm-hmm. But then I ended up finding the high impact one. So I never actually contacted golden. Dragon. Oh, okay. out there. And then when I started training for high impact, um, a lot of the guys were very sour on gold dragon as like Jan, J.S. McStrongarm, whatever you want to call him. A lot of people, I don't know what's true and what's not, but a lot of people say that he started training with high impact wrestling and then he quit and went out there and just started his own promotion. And a lot of the guys viewed him as untrained backyarders, mm-hmm. things like that. So that was sort of my, uh, my knowledge and experience, but I know like great guys have worked there like Mentolo and they brought in names like Davey boy and Jake, the snake and stuff as well. So. Mm -hmm. You brought up McSure there, man. And I just, I have to just ask for a general summary of you guys, because man, there's not one specific question. There's so much entertaining about the two of you guys, whether you're working against each other, working with each other, just tell me a little bit about your relationship, both inside and outside professional wrestling. Well, uh, I'll just start how it started. I remember I was really kind of saddled. We were into a stable at the time. It was me, Wavell, cash king cash and um i think that was our stable that was our core three guys and they're gonna have mick sugar turn and join us and then they're gonna have me and mick sugar tag and i was like uh like i don't want to tag i want to be like by myself sort of thing Mm -hmm. and being on the road with mick sugar even before like this kind of stuff we were kind we were pretty good friends because we had a very similar sense of humor 
we found a lot of the same things funny. He's a lot more uh, goofy than I am, though, when it comes to taking risque things. sometimes. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, when it comes to take something seriously, he's almost too goofy. Like there's mm-hmm. lots of times where you're, you're trying to like call a match or something, and it's like, make sure you get the fuck over here. Like, <laughs> take this seriously. Like this is a like at meltdown or something. Like this is a big thing. Like we got 600 people. We need to get this like. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Especially when you got eight people in a TLC match or something, right? <laughs> but uh, so we, when we were traveling, we discovered that we had a very similar sense of humor. We got along really well. And then I sort of tried to incorporate those things into the tag. And then we just played off each other really well too, which was, uh, it, it was just one of those things that really worked. Yeah. It's kind of funny, man, because like, again, you go back and you watch the YouTube videos that you guys have done and the promos you guys have cut with each other. Like, it's a weird way again to put it, but you've been on YouTube for eight years. It's kind of fun to be able to go back and watch some of the videos you guys have been doing for that long. It's again, you look at some of the professional wrestlers out there, like guys like Colt Cabana and even what Thaddeus Archer the third's doing here in Alberta. Was that something that you tried to consciously get into? Or again, just hearing from stories about that, sounds like you were just trying to do it for fun at some points too yeah the youtube scene or the promos themselves but the youtube scenes like the pro the prom putting it on youtube was like yeah it's always always wanted to like get something and, and a lot of our stuff if you notice isn't even like pertaining to wrestling in any way mm-hmm. like some of our not all of our stuff is on youtube we have a lot of stuff on facebook too that we would just cut a stupid promo like where i give them a baby for valentine's day like that has nothing to do with wrestling and that's what i love about that dynamic and that's why i tried to do that with uh that workout video i i do want to make more i'm going to make more i have more things i gotta write and whatever but that first one that i made i wanted nothing to do with wrestling like yeah sure it's my wrestling character i'm being an asshole i'm being a douchebag whatever but I didn't want anything to do with wrestling. I just wanted to try and be entertaining. Mm -hmm. I think it's a really great comparison though, because I was actually talking with Sean Moore about it earlier too. And that like a lot of the conversation or there seems to come up every couple of months on Twitter is what can Canadian wrestlers be doing to get themselves out there more? And how can Canadian wrestling gain more exposure? And it's a totally valid conversation, but I think a lot of the stuff like that is probably the biggest thing you guys can be doing right now. Correct especially right now. Yeah. Like you can't wrestle. You can't do that. I mean, at the end of the day, yeah, you got great talents like blaze and stuff who go viral. It seems once a year with like a, an insane thing, whether mm-hmm. he's like doing a six thirty on Cody Rhodes or he's doing that Spanish fly, the marquee outside the bloody ring. Like that guy went viral. For that. I mean, literally have that photo right there, <laughs> but like, so like not everybody's going to be able to do those things either. Like I'd be more than happy to go viral blaze. Don't get me wrong, but I don't think (laughs) Sean Moore is necessarily as willing to uh, do a Spanish fly to the floor, you know? Uh, Yeah. I mean, I could be wrong there, but that being said, I just, yeah, I want to, I'm trying to do something different, just try and be entertaining. And all it takes is the right person to see something too, right? The right person to share it. Someone with a giant following maybe shares it. I got a buddy Mm -hmm. who, uh, that Yu-Gi-Oh forbidden memes guy. He's a, myself and O'Doyle are actually buddies with the guy. Like we found him right in the beginning, like when his Facebook page had like 20 likes and we would always engage with him. And he was so excited to engage with us, which is kind of funny looking back. And uh, now you look at his Twitter, he has 15,000 followers and he's like, he's just like a meme page. So I always give him ideas for memes and stuff. And if, if I ask him like some things, I'll be like, Hey, do you mind retweeting this? And he's always more than happy to help out. Mm-hmm. So that's like one cool thing. So like I said, it could take someone with just a big following just to tweet out the right thing. And maybe someone thinks you're funny enough and watches all your stuff, you know? Got a fan right here for what that's worth. It is all about just getting eyes on yourself, right? You've done a good job of doing that in the past. We've talked about your WWE tryout, frankly, to death when we did last chat. So no sense in mentioning it unless you want to chat about it. The one I wanted to pick your brain on a bit was the Evolve tryout that you had. You only fleetingly mentioned it. I think it was with the Massey twins when you did the interview with them. Let's talk about that a little bit, though. What was the experience like? How did it come about? Um actually Sean was sending me stuff. And I think that's like really what led to uh, the WWE tryout was that evolve thing. Okay. Uh, I saw that it was like, it was just an evolve. I don't even know if it was, yeah, I guess it's a trial, but I, I saw it as a camp. 
Okay. They're, they had WWE people there, like Serena Deeb was there, Oni Lorcan, uh, Terry Taylor, Norman Smiley, like some really great Real high talent eyes. was there. Yeah, like and their trainers. And in my mind, I went down there and I was like, man, I just want, I just need to impress one person, or I, I need someone, one person to like me. And I, I think I got that. And I didn't even, honestly, I didn't even really, the Evolve thing would be great. Don't get me wrong, but that's what I was there for, truly. Mm-hmm. And at that Evolve show, actually, they were uh, picking guys to be security and do like a little bit extra, whatever. Mm-hmm. And I am apologize, I don't remember who was in the match. One of the Brazilian jiu-jitsu kind of guys. He's in NXT now, I can't remember his name. But they are picking bigger guys for security. And believe it or not, there were some big guys there and I wasn't the biggest or anything, but they're like pointing people over. And I just went over and stood in that group <laughs> and uh, Gabe Sapolsky, actually, like he looked at me, he's like, did I pick you? And I'm like, yeah, and never questioned it. And then I went and did the security or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. It's like the definition of shoot your shot. Just sort of got to squeak in slide right? your way over there man yeah. that's so so cool and it's very very cool to hear that it panned out because even for me man it's no pun intended but i completely marked out seeing you on there <laughs> yeah it As was get- a lot of fun we have a lot of great talent in canada and like eyes are getting more and more on canada with like people like chelsea green making a big name and now kenny omega like making more of a north american name in aew and stuff like it's only a matter of time me blaze and sean and other guys always talk about these things about mm-hmm. like, man, we're like so close. There's a cusp and there's so much good talent that could just like easily be on those shows. Yeah. It's a fairly generic question admittedly, man. But like, it, do you think there's one thing, like you say, is it as simple as you and MRB going viral again? Or does there need to be more of a groundswell, like the easy answer of an NXT Canada that everybody brings up? where's sort of the fine line in there is there a fine line or is there something that you specifically think could be like the turning point i guess it's tough i think once one guy if one guy got in and made a good impression and had like a good reputation and a good relationship and was able to pull some more of his friends in Mm -hmm. i think that's like what's really like that will like open the doors i think sounds Um, good man as we get closer to wrap I don't well, know if it's a viral thing. Sorry, sorry. I, I don't no, know. No, don't worry. Viral thing or like just what you know, it just takes one guy, right? <laughs> Absolutely, man. Now, as we get closer to wrapping her up here, I've got a couple of quick, more specific questions here for you. What is the specific issue with bus people? Uh, they're the bane of society. They rely, think about it. If everybody drove a bus, how much gas would that waste? I'm saving the environment by driving my car. Everybody else takes the bus. That's that's terrible. Look how big a bus is. How many? Yeah, I can't fit 40 people in a car. It's basically 10 cars. 40 people. Regard, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. <laughs> now, I actually, I should give myself the caveat here because I said a couple of shorter questions, but this one might need some debate on your end. Which post-Pantera project was best, whether it's Damage Plan, Hell Yeah, whoever it may be? I didn't like Hell Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I even yeah. went to a, I went to a hell yeah show just to meet Vinnie Paul. <laughs> and I, that way it was not a very good show. I wasn't impressed, honestly. We're it leaning into the damage Vinnie plan Paul. side of things. <laughs> yeah. I, I like damage plans album. Actually, that was a pretty good album. And like a lot of people would say down down, mm-hmm. which is a fair answer, but like, I don't know down is sort of hit and miss. Like they got some good stuff and they got some, I don't know, not as great stuff with me, but damage plan for sure. I like damage plan a lot. Now, similar but different did you enjoy pantera's hair metal years um their last album when phil was actually a singer was okay yeah Power metal yeah that that one was okay like all the stuff with terry glaze like i don't know like it you you kind of get like hints of what's to come almost but it's mm. it's not it's not quite pantera yet they're close but no cigar my friend but say la vie hopefully we're closer rather than the no cigar side of things as far as getting to see you back in a wrestling ring sooner rather than later man because let me tell you i miss wrestling specifically a lot but i miss watching you wrestle man you're a personal favorite you're a hell of an individual and someone i'm very very thankful took the time for me today where can people keep track of the longest name in professional wrestling and one of the best follows in professional wrestling if they want to I, I like to think I'm funny on Twitter, uh, Team Flex Appeal, Instagram, Michael Albert Clark, the whole name. You can add me on Facebook. I don't really use Facebook much, to be honest, but YouTube, 
I think my YouTube's Michael A.R. Clark because they wouldn't fit my whole name, which is still annoying. I got an issue there. That's why my Twitter's Team Flex Field because Michael Allen Richard Clark does not fit. So <laughs> we've got to get over like the 280 character limit or whatever it is at this point. Come right? on, let's go, Twitter. Pick it up. <laughs> you're making us pay for tweets and you're not even giving us long enough display names. Well, <laughs> say la vie on that end. Hopefully, we get to see the longest name in professional wrestling back inside the squared circle sooner rather than later, whether it's with the PWA, whether it's out in Saskatchewan or on a TV screen near you guys sooner rather than later. Thanks once again to Michael Allen, Richard Clark for taking the time. I've been Spencer Love for Love Wrestling. Don't forget to give us all of those likes and subscribes and follows and Yelp reviews and all of that good stuff. You can find all of that in the links below. Thanks once again, friends. It's been great. Comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. There we go. There's the closing words. (laughs) 